I'm going to look at a couple of ideas to show you to simplify your pieces when you're learning a new piece and you, you look at the score and you think, wow, there's just so many notes there, I can't really see the wood for the trees. One thing we can do is, in certain pieces, we can form blocks, chord blocks, out of broken chord patterns. And I'm using for my example here the C minor prelude from book one of Bach's 48 Preludes and Fugues. This. <laughs> there and at first glance there's no terrain there to make the, to distinguish one block of 16th notes from another until we start to probe a little bit then I can spot here if I play my first note and my second note in my right hand and my first note and second note in my left hand together I find I've got a C minor chord beautifully laid out then I notice the second half of the bar I've got the same thing if I proceed, why play it twice? Why not just play once? That gives me a better sense of the underlying harmonic structure and the relative intensity level. So what I mean by that, first chord, there's no tension there. There's a little bit more intensity in that chord, but here there's quite a lot of dissonance. I've got a C in the bass against a B in the top, and then it resolves. And that will inform how I play when I open the, the note pattern up into the 16th notes that we see on the page. Now, I don't think it'll take um, anybody by surprise if I suggest that we can do that for the first prelude as well, the C major prelude. <laughs> Science. But you can feel there again how one chord relates to the next in a probably better way uh, or, or more easily hear that than if you were to immediately open it up. I can play the progression of harmony much quicker and I can feel the progression uh, much more easily that way. It really helps me learn it. And actually, I think it's a good thing to do in the practice from time to time anyway, just to come back to the original um, skeleton of the piece. I'm going to move on now to Mozart Sonata in F, K332, the second movement. Now, at first glance, there's quite a lot of, of notes here. You've got some ornaments in the right hand. You've got a lot of 16th note semiquavers in the left hand. So this is what it sounds like when it's opened up. Um, this is how Mozart wrote it. Lovely piece. Now, I notice in the left hand that I've got what's known as an Alberti bass. Now that can be, of course, blocked. So I might decide, right, let me block my left hand. I notice that the second beat's the same as the first, so I could just hold that chord down for two beats rather than replay it. Two, two. That's the same chord, but in a different inversion. Now, the, the next bar, bar three, is a little bit more complex. And let's say I'm getting a bit overwhelmed by the number of notes in that bar. I could look a little bit and uh, into the score and discover, ah, okay, well, the bass note, the first bass note is an E flat that lasts for two beats, actually. And then the next bass note's a D that also lasts for two beats. Forget the stuff on the top of that. Forget all that for a moment and just see if I can play the right hand um, on top of the very simple bass line. Now, the right hand itself has a few, I wouldn't say extraneous notes, they're not extraneous, but they're decorative notes. So the G could lead straight to the F. Now this E is a decoration to, to the F, it's an appoggiatura. So what I could do, I could do something really simple and just do this. 
notice that all I've got underneath the, the forest of notes on the top is just two notes that descend in tens. Right, now let me open the right hand up a little bit. You see how I'm doing that? Now let me have a little look at the complete right hand against just that very simple left hand. starting to make more sense to me now. I noticed the tenor line, it's not really a tenor line, but the middle um, element here creates a line of its own. What would that sound like if I played it together? Uh -huh. See what I did there? I just left out the bass note on that occasion and just got interested in what was going on in the the middle line there. Now I think I'm ready to open that up. Yeah, that makes much more sense to me now, having explored it in its simplified version. So here are just a few skeletons that you could make. Skeleton number one. Just a few more notes, not so many, but a, a few more. I'm really feeling that appoggiatura there. And there. Uh -huh. Now let me move on to skeleton number three, possible skeleton number three. process the individual skeletons before you end up at the, the complete version. But it's well worth exploring pieces from this angle. See if you can find what's underneath the notes, behind the notes. Practice that first, go back to it again later if you need to, and it will really help you learn pieces much more deeply and actually much more quickly. And it's fun.